Today at Aero, we are going to be discussing how to convert an Aero process ready diaphragm pump, which it would be in this case a PD10P model, one inch polypropylene, into a PE10P model, which gives you the capability of running your pump or using a solenoid to tell where your major valve where to go in place of an air signal. So before you start, you always want to make sure you have your proper operator's manual. The operator's manual will give you key instructions on lubrication instructions as well as torque specifications. Take your five millimeter Allen wrench and remove the four to six Allen wrench head screws from the major valve and set aside. After removing your major valve, set it aside. Make sure you remove any remaining seals from the center body your new major valve, which would include your solenoid, will include all the proper seals. Go ahead and go to the back of the pump and remove your muffler. And set aside. You'll notice, and this is standard on all aero diaphragm pumps, a plug port right above your muffler port. Go ahead and take your 10 millimeter Allen wrench and remove this plug counterclockwise. This port is for the new proximity sensor that we'll be installing shortly which reads your end of stroke or it picks up the signal from your diaphragm rod to count cycles. Take your two leak detection sensors, you'll receive two in the kit, and carefully PTFE tape your threads, roughly two, two layers of tape, and you'll want to make sure you stay clear of your sensor, that way you have no interference. So after you wrap that twice, you'll move to your next piece and make sure you do both of those. And then, well, we have the Teflon tape out. Do the same thing to your proximity sensor. Roughly two layers of tape. What you'll do next is take your proximity sensor or your end of stroke sensor and thread it into the smaller port right above your muffler exhaust port hand tight until it seats all the way down. Once hand tightened, take a 13th, 16th box open end wrench and just snug the sensor till it seats. You want to be careful not to over tighten or you cause damage to the sensor. What this sensor does is it picks up a signal from the diaphragm rod. Process ready diaphragm pumps when ordered as PD models and PE models come with a diaphragm rod that is machined in the center along with the bushing, diaphragm rod bushing, 
is machined in the center, which the sensor is able to pick up the diaphragm rod or a signal from the diaphragm rod, which would count your strokes. When installing your muffler, you will want to use a three quarter inch, 45 degree adapter street elbow to prevent any pinching of the proximity sensor. This part is sold separately. Be sure you check your operator's manual for proper part number. You at least want to get three or four threads of engagement. If you noticed, we did Teflon tape each threaded end. You will thread both the elbow and the muffler hand tight to prevent any damage to the threads. If you notice, you have plenty of room between your solenoid or your proximity sensor and your muffler. The next step would be to go back to the other side of the pump. We're going to install the new major valve assembly which will include your solenoid. Each conversion kit comes with all of the proper seals You'll want to make sure that you save and keep your two quick dump valves from your original major valve. So we'll go ahead and you want to make sure you properly lubricate all of your seals, all of your seals with a pat with FML2 grease. Place your seals in the proper location according to your operator's manual. So we have our seals assembled. In your new major valve assembly, your major valve is controlled by a signal from the solenoid compared to the standard pump where your major valve was controlled by your air signal from your pilot valve. Each major valve conversion kit will include a carrot shaped plug which and make sure you reference your operator's manual. You want to plug in this case on this one inch diaphragm pump in that center port until it seats and push in snugly. What this carrot plug is doing is it's blocking the pilot valve port from sending the signal to the major valve. In this case your solenoid is now going to take the place of sending that signal to the from the pilot valve to the major valve to tell the spool when to cycle or when to shift. Set your major valve assembly aside and per manual specifications you want to apply a little of FML2 grease which does come in your major valve assembly conversion kit to any mating parts and the manual does state to apply it to your mating part here so do this to all six screws in this case. Now we're ready to reassemble or attach our major valve to the center body of the pump. First you want to make sure your major valve is in the upright condition and that the ports on the major valve plate match the ports to the center body. Go ahead and take your hardware and make sure you have your washer on there for each screw. Thread it on there and get it started.
using a five millimeter Allen wrench, go ahead and thread your bolts on your center body. Snug because what we're going to do is the operator manual calls out a torque specification on these particular screws. Once you have your major valve securely fastened to the center body, you'll take a torque wrench that measures in inch pounds and according to the operator's manual alternately and evenly torque each fastener. You want to do this at least twice just to make sure you have the proper torque. Alternately and evenly. It's very important not to over tighten these, over torque these fasteners to prevent any damage to the major valve plate. Included in each major valve conversion kit, you will find a small silencer or muffler used on the solenoid. You can see that the muffler comes pre-installed with a O-ring from the factory. Take your muffler and thread it into the top of your solenoid. Hand tight. Using a small box open and wrench of the proper size or an adjustable wrench. Tighten silencer snugly to finish until it seats. To use with an aero controller, take your solenoid connector which is included on the harness of the controller and connect to the solenoid on the pump using a Phillips head screwdriver tighten securely the screw on the connector then take the end of your proximity sensor and thread the M12 connection on the harness for the controller to the proximity sensor From here, what we have done is we converted a standard PD model to a PE model, which can receive, in this case, 24 volt DC signal from an aero controller or a PLC. What is also available are our leak detection option. Go ahead and tilt your pump on its side, and you notice at the bottom you have a plugged port on each side of your air section. These plugged ports are to be removed using a six millimeter Allen wrench and upon removal or after removal these ports are to be used for your diaphragm failure or your leak detection kits. There's one lead per side. Get your port there and your port there. Both of these leads are the same, so it doesn't matter what which one you use per side. You want to make sure you get a good thread in there. Get it started. Make sure you don't strip it. Hand tighten it the best you can. Take your sensor on the opposite end, thread it into the open port. The next step will be to take your leak detection leads, the opposite end, and thread them to your connector that comes with the leak detection kit. 
Make sure you line them up properly. It's a three pin connector. And tighten that nut snugly. Same with the other end. Each leak detection kit comes with a cable. You want to take your M12 connection, four pin connectors, and match them up properly. If you can see, there's a groove in there. You want to match it up with the groove on the opposite end. Insert that properly and thread securely. And this concludes the PD to PE diaphragm pump conversion process.